Charles Revson, founder of the cosmetics company Revlon, famously said, In the factory, we make cosmetics, but in the stores, we sell hope. Any student of marketing knows that playing to three emotions gets the best results. Hope, as in Revlon, greed and fear, or in today's lingo, FOMO. Recently, in November 2020, FOMO took center stage when software engineer Pradeep Punia accused White Hat Jr., an ad tech company, of unethical and aggressive marketing strategies and selling fake dreams to children and their parents. Saying that their young students like Wolf Gupta and Ryan Venkat were fictional and that their huge salaries at tech giants such as Google were untrue. Becoming a vocal critic of this company's practices on almost every social media platform, only to be sued by White Hat Jr. 20 crore rupees for defaming them. Notably, the Advertising Standards Council of India ASCI asked White Hat Jr. to remove five of their seven ads for misleading claims. Aggressive marketing is not a new concept and neither is it illegal, though how close to the line you get is a moral issue. Also, direct one-on-one -on -one selling is more prone to aggressive marketing as you have the undivided attention of your prospective client. The timeshare industry, aka fractional property ownership, is a case in point. Here, young couples would be invited to a lavish event, fed the choicest of snacks and shown images of lovely locales with happy families frolicking on beaches. Once they were comfortable and had their guard down, marketers would step in for the kill, offering an unbelievable price, though still in lakhs, for holidays like this for the next 25 years. But with a rider, this deal is only valid till you leave this room. Young working couples got huge anxiety once they got back home, regretting the purchase. I spent too much money. I was fooled. A condition known as buyer's remorse. After many years of having a free reign with this type of aggressive marketing, eventually the court stepped in. You can have your money back if within seven days you feel you made the wrong decision. Gorilla marketing is another popular tactic used by German skincare product company Sibamed to create doubts, fear in the mind of consumers, who because they couldn't compete head-on with the market leader in this 22,000 crore Indian soap market, made their soaps lower pH value a selling point, even though there is no proven benefit of that except to create a new battlefront and be noticed. Here too, the court had to butt in and adjudicate. Comparisons of pH value with detergent soaps is prohibited. Restrict yourselves to skin cleaning soaps only. Many fast food chains also use tricks to falsely advertise their products, like using fillers in their food items to make them look bigger in ads, triggering greed. Use inedible products like glue instead of cheese or milk to make dishes look more appetizing and appealing. Or use cardboard and motor oil instead of flour and maple syrup. However, the concerned authority in the US, FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, does not have any laws prohibiting this. Because until and unless glue or motor oil is not in the final product being served to customers, it's fine. In 2009, an Olay ad was banned by British advertising regulator ASA for showing former model Twiggy looking a lot younger than her age at that time. That's another case of hope. Graphical retouching was a routine practice till 10 years back until a backlash forced glamour magazine and fashion advertisers to minimize these touch-ups. Maggie's healthy instant noodles were found to have monosodium glutamate MSG and lead in excess of prescribed limits, where celebrities Madhuri Dixit, Amitabh Bachchan and Priti Zinta two-faced FIRs for promoting products without verifying claims. KFC's 2004 retracted ad claimed that chicken breast only had 11 grams carbohydrates and 40 grams of protein and that eating two of them was better than eating one Burger King chicken whopper. But there are some really stupid laws like the case of Red Bull's tagline, Red Bull gives you wings, claiming improved focus, concentration and reaction speed. But a regular consumer of Red Bull for 10 years took this too literally and sued Red Bull claiming, I did not develop wings or show any signs of improved intellectual or physical abilities. The company had to settle this frivolous case by agreeing to pay $13 million, including $10 to every US customer who had bought the drink since 2002. However, marketing aggressively to children may be stretching it a bit too far. From Jan 2020, YouTube stopped all ads in channels dedicated to children below 13, claiming they were too young to understand that they were being unduly influenced. Though children are anyway major influencers in upper middle class families, even deciding the make and colour of cars, etc. 
However, education is an altogether different thing as right choices made early may make a huge difference later on. Even NEP 2020 makes coding mandatory for kids in grade 6 and above in the belief that an early start may help them become better software engineers. White Hat's Bajaj is mindful of being more ethical in the future. Any advertising we did to the contrary, I would openly say we should not have done it. Blaming any unintended transgressions to unbridled growth. It took a while for robust internal review processes to be set up. So a lot of things were happening on the fly. I wish I had focused on this earlier. However, Punia has raised a red flag when it comes to using FOMO in marketing to children. Michael Douglas as Gordon Gecko turned greed on its head when he famously said, "Greed is good." The founder of Intel, Andy Grove, slayed fear by embracing it. Only the paranoid survive. And we all know that when everything else sinks, only hope floats. So who is to say what is right or wrong? What do our viewers think? Bizbo's Limerick. Many companies use aggressive marketing to lure their consumer who they claim is king. But can kids comprehend the means from an end? Do they understand if any benefit it brings? Do join Bizbo on Discord and follow us on Instagram at gobizbo. Subscribe to Bizbo and click on the bell icon to get notified whenever Bizbo releases a new video. Sources of all our information is listed in the video description section.